isn't Auckland just brilliant? Left, right and centre has so many extraordinary things for you to experience and it's highly renowned as New Zealand's most super city. It's so super that close to 1.4 million of us choose to live here. And who wouldn't want to live here? I mean, think about it. The breathless harbour views. The sweeping west coast beaches. The ritzy and glitzy havens on the North Shore. The sprawling new communities popping up all over East Auckland. And in South Auckland, well, actually, when you think about it, South Auckland um, really doesn't have rate of mention in many of Auckland's promotional videos. Now, I don't mean to fire any shots here, but let's face it, the only time tourists are in South Auckland are when they're leaving or arriving in Auckland. I mean, if Auckland is so super, then why is such a big part of it left out? We are a vibrant and thriving community, community out here. We have a lot of great things happening. Certainly a lot more than just our international airport and, you know, some flea markets. So um, I've been watching the news and I've seen these shenanigans about Auckland and how it's being or become a super city. And it's left me wondering what is actually super about our super city. Well, let's take our housing for example. There's no questioning our housing is one of the most expensive in the world. The stats tell us that the average Auckland housing price could cost you up to $830,000 and still increasing. Uh, that's, I don't know if you know, but that's the all-time Auckland high and still increasing by the minute. Experts predict that the average Auckland housing price could cost over $1 million in the next 18 months or so. Now, if this is true, then reality is when we're all growing up, if we don't have a spare $2 million in our pocket, then it's highly likely we'll be living elsewhere when we're older. There'll only be room for the super rich in our super community. So before we became a super city, we had a voice in our local communities. I'm pretty sure everyone here has heard of the city of Manukau. Well, they were probably one of the most well-resourced, if not the most well-resourced communities of them all, with a lot of assets to go with it. But you know, that's all changed now, that's all in the past, and it's left a lot of people questioning, what is so super about taking away the democratic voice of people and their communities? What is so super about taking away, uh, about taking away all the assets that a community has built up to spread across the wider region. In reality, the super, this concept of a super city has changed, shortchanged us more ways than one. Oh, the next one, please. The next one. The, 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 the stats tell us that the, that the income gap between Auckland's poorest and richest communities has grown. Now that doesn't sound like equity to me. So what has our Super City Council done for us as a community since 2010? Let's see. Ah, yes, our super reliable transport system. Our railway system is so super, so reliable, so prestige, that your train is more likely to come late than on time nowadays. And if you're willing to travel to the heart of the city, be prepared to sit in congested traffic for an hour or two. And let's not forget about our community facilities such as your local community swimming pools that you now have to pay for. And I wouldn't be surprised if we had to start paying for stuff like, you know, your, your libraries, your playgrounds, your Saturday morning playing fields, or even your beaches. Now, in my mind, Auckland is far from even calling itself a super city. We need to focus on these problems that the super city have created. Is Auckland Council's concept of a super city really what it makes out to be? Because to be quite honest with you, I don't see how we as a city have improved in any way under this new regime. Thank you very much.